Hey everyone, there's no time for our regular intro because it's the end of the day when we're filming this, but we have new knives and that's Thomas behind the camera. Hey! Let's get into it. Okay, I'm not sure I can maintain that uh, same level of intensity throughout, but we'll try to be a... Uh... I don't think I could handle it. <laughs> we'll try to be succinct today. First thing on the uh, proverbial menu for us is a new CRKT, and to say they're, they're making a splash with this would be an understatement. This is one of their USA-made collaborations with Hogue Knives, so you know the quality of it is going to be top-notch. It is a Ken Onion design based on his dead man's hand uh, custom which is a flipper. This is a crossbar lock, however, this uh, production version. And yes, I also know they had a redemption fixed blade uh, at some point in the past, but it's a folder now. Forget about that other one. Four inch dagger ground blade, single edged, magna cut steel, and the price, $225. Astonished, like they could have easily gone higher with the price on this, I think, given the, uh, the make and the materials going on here. Come on, just a solid, solid offering, I think. We have stainless steel bolsters. We have G10 handles with a oval inlay there on the front and on the back. And one thing you'll notice when I close the blade thusly, you don't see any of the blade in that closed position. Therefore, there are no thumb studs or any other opening method apart from pull back on that crossbar lock. And as you can see, it actually kicks the blade out to get things started and swing it open and you're good to go. Very, very cool. It is completely ambidextrous. We've got a deep carry pocket clip inset with flush mounted screws into the scales. Very nice, very easy to swap that around and very clean on the front side because they gave you a uh, black blackout, black blackout plate. That works. Energy's gone. We're going slow from it. Now we'll keep going <laughs> um, on the front there. So it doesn't stick out uh, like a sore thumb. It blends in quite nicely. It's really cool. It's big. Like there's definitely some heft to it. Uh, 4.06 inches on the blade, like I mentioned, stone washed finish uh, for a nice hard wearing finish over time. 4.9 ounces. So it's not ultra light. Like I said, you have a little bit of girth to it. You feel like you could get some, uh, some work done. My favorite thing about it though, well, there's a lot I like about it, but one of the cool things that I noticed about it, you can open it two-handed, even though you don't have any blade that you can see, and here's how. Hold it with the blade facing up, grasp it thusly, pinch the lock bar, and push it back with as much force as you can muster. Because, <laughs> you know, it, like I said, it's just kind of kicking it up. You can see the action there, but do it strong enough, and you got that thing going on. So that's fun. At least I think that's fun. Very, very cool knife indeed. Well done, CRKT, Ken Onion, and Hogue. That's a, that's a trio right there uh, to be, not to be trifled with. Let's check out a new carbon knife, carbon with a K, Ken Onion's brand as well. So we're keeping the Ken Onion theme going here for a moment. Uh, there are two versions of this knife. It's got a three and a quarter inch blade and you've got, you can get it either with a 20 CV handle, 20 CV blade with a titanium handle or an aluminum handled version with a 14 C 28 N blade steel, that nice Swedish steel that I love so much. Uh, this is called the Beatnik. I should mention that. I haven't mentioned that yet. Uh, prices started about 132 for the 14 C 28 N version and about 240 for this 20 CV version. They're really, really sweet. The blade is a drop point and it kind of gives off kind of, you know, elongated pen knife vibes just a little bit. Full flat grind, very fine kind of blasted style finish on this chamfered edges. Fantastic looking. I really like the handles though. Swelling out towards the back, beveled away with this cross hatched milling. I guess you call that cross hatched, right? It's hatched. Very cool looking milling. It feels good. It's not too aggressive in the hand, but it does give you some extra texture. A lot of grip in this knife too. As you can see, I've got all four of my fingers on that knife, no problem. And I do have slightly larger than average hands. Uh, weight on this one, about 3.25 ounces. And a lot of that is in the handle here. So even though it's got kind of an executive knife vibe, definitely a gentlemanly feel to it. Feels like you could get some solid work done too. We have ball bearings in the pivot. We have a bolstered frame lock is what they're calling it. It you know, kind of behaves, I think, more like a liner lock, but you have a thicker 
uh, engagement with, or a thicker piece of metal that actually engages with the tang of the blade right there, not just a thin liner. But that is something pulled straight from the Ken Onion Customs. It's a very, very nice touch indeed. Milled pocket clip, no visible screw from the outside on that. It is secured from the inside. Quite, quite nice. Nice flipping action as well. A solid thwack on it, actually. Let's do that again. Yeah, very, very nice. Now for another company kind of with you know, a long uh, you know, historical association with Ken Onion, and that would be Kershaw. Check out the newest version of their Livewire OTF. It's been a very popular knife this year in any guys, but they've recently up updated it to Magna Cut Blade Steel and then released a blue version with the Magna Cut Blade Steel as well, priced at about 266 right now. And for those of you unfamiliar with Magna Cut, class, say it with me, it is tough. It is stainless and it has high edge retention. Most steels, when they push one or two of those uh, you know, areas, the third inevitably suffers a little bit, but Magna Cut does all three exceptionally well. We got a stonewashed finish on the blade, 3.3 inches long, very acute tip, very cool looking swedge on top of the full flat grind there. Blue aluminum, it feels good in the hand, despite looking like it might be a little angular, it's not as angular feeling as it looks in the hand, I should say. And speaking of comfort, the switch is quite comfortable and quite effective at deploying that blade. The action is quite nice. We've got a deep carry pocket clip that is actually reversible, which is interesting because it sits at kind of a strange angle due to the, uh, the back end of the uh, knife not being square to the lines, essentially but it works quite well. We've you know, thrown, them, thrown them in our pockets and there's nothing wrong with it there when it's in the pocket. It just looks a little different from the outside. But thanks to that reversibility, this is a completely ambidextrous design, which should please the lefties or the offhand uh, right-handed users as well. Another Magna Cut Auto on the table today from Protec. This is their Runt 5. Uh, and this is a bit of a fancier version, 295 for it. You got a two inch Magna Cut blade in the, say it. No. Say it. No. Say it. I will be here all day. Really? You want to? No, no, actually, I got to leave. But say it's it. It's a reverse tanto. It's a reverse tanto. Thank you, Thomas. Sorry to get adversarial. I know you guys don't like it when mommy and daddy fight. It's fine. I, I apologize. Reverse tanto blade, <laughs> Magna Cut fin or Magna Cut steel, stonewashed finish. Really cool little kind of boxy utility knife vibes going on with it. The handles, bronzed aluminum, very cool, and a mother of pearl firing button, also very cool. Let's check out the action. It being a Protec, that's one of my favorite things about them. It making me smile. We've got a deep carry pocket clip inset with flush mounted screw heads, very cool. Now, the cool thing about this you know, handle material is it will patina. It'll kind of change uh, its look as your you know, hands and your oils, <laughs> your human juices interact with it. And it's a bit hefty. Now they have done a little bit of milling on the inside to remove some weight, but it's still a little bit of a chunky feeling thing. There's definitely a solidity to it. I mean, it, weight on this is 3.81 ounces. That's only like one ounce less than the redemption there from the front. So that's a kind of a funny comparison actually, but it feels good. It looks great. The steel is a great selection here, even if it is a reverse tonto. I gotta say, I, I like this little guy. Got another little guy to take a look at here too from one of our, uh, or, or one of my at least, uh, favorite makers of executive style gentlemen's knives. This is not an executive style gentleman knife, but it is a Brad Zinker design. Uh, this is the Urban Trapper Stubby with a sub two inch clip point VG10 blade. It is nice and thin as well with that tall geometry uh, or the, the tall height to the blade with that high flat grind. This is gonna have a really cool little efficient slice. Fair bit of belly on it, so be careful uh, going through longer cuts, the uh, kind of tendency to maybe slip out might uh, might present itself a little bit, but you know, kept within the uh, bounds of what it can do, it should be very, very nice. Stonewashed folded titanium pocket clip. I believe it's titanium, they typically are. Uh, really cool little finish inset with flush mounted screw heads. Love that too. 
The handles are black G10. They look nice and classy in this guy's a little bit of contouring to it. Let us flip it, shall we? And this is where when you do have slightly larger or even larger than average hands, this is a little bit, uh, it kind of strains the bounds of what you can do, but it's just within uh, just within reach for me. <laughs> Works pretty, pretty nicely. Both of these, uh, this and the uh, runt, I think would make a uh, really cool little fifth pocket uh, carry knives as well. The little watch pocket in your, uh, your pair of jeans that otherwise it's kind of hard to find a use for sometimes. Uh, about $107 for this knife right here. Uh, for something more affordable and also something that would make kind of a cool watch pocket carry. Doesn't take up too much room, does it? Uh, this is the S-Rail retractable utility knife from Boker. It's about $60 with a chisel ground, actually, yeah, a chisel ground uh, D2 blade right here. Uh, almost as unblade-like of a blade as you can get. It's kind of a, a rounded off rectangle in a way. Just over two inches. Uh, chisel ground for a very good reason, because there's no cover on the front of the blade. Therefore, you don't want, when this is in your pocket, for the edge to catch some other things. And the chisel grind is part of what maintains that, because here, check out the back. There's no grind towards the center line. The sharpened edge sits all the way off on the one side. Combine that with a little bit of a lip here on the G10. I hope you can see that, and you're not touching or unable to touch the edge. Watch out, if I cut myself there, it would have been really funny. No, like you can't, you can't touch it, so that's pretty cool. You do have a deep carry pocket clip right here, sits quite deep indeed, and then when you are ready to deploy the blade, constant pressure is required. I don't know, let's, let's try, let's see if we can. Now I can't even flick it out. Do not attempt. Do not, yeah, might be able to get some more leverage somewhere else, but no, this, this is not a flickable out the front knife, it is a push the button and slide it till it is in place. And you've got a cool little utility knife right there, ready to go. Next up, a couple of non-Swiss Swiss Army knives. Can we get away with calling them that? They're just Army knives. Some, uh, some Swiss Army knife uh, or, or premium alternatives to the Swiss Army knife. The first here is from Fox Knives. It is about yay big. How big is that? We have a rule right here, yes? Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Uh, let's see. Closed length is about two and seven eighths of an inch. So that gives you a good idea there. $107 for this titanium for the handles there. And we've got four layers of tools on this knife. Let's start with the blade, because that is the most interesting part. We've got this modified sheep's foot going on and we have M390 steel with a full flat grind on it. Really, really cool everyday utility blade shape there. And with M390, you've got a good bit of edge retention as well. Blade length, find that out as well. Uh, just over two and a quarter, right? No, just under two and a quarter, sorry. I went to school, I know how to read a ruler. <laughs> uh, so that's that's the length you're, you are dealing with. Really cool, really easy to access too, thanks to that complete blade cut out there in lieu of a nail neck. Not super snappy action, but it does have a half stop, which is nice. Moving, starting from the other side, actually, we've got a can opener with a flathead and we have a cap lifter with a slightly bigger flathead on the end right there. Grinds on them feel nice and precise. The uh, screwdriver heads themselves, I think look a little bit crisper than you, what you might find on a, uh, a Victorinox Swiss Army knife. So maybe a little more uh, power there, a little more of a precision fit, I should say. We've got a pair of scissors right next to those and they feel really good, having not actually tested these in use, but they, they feel like they're gonna cut pretty well. Uh, and we have a small saw, which maybe on this small titanium, you know, Swiss Army style knife, uh, maybe would have liked to see like a file or something instead of the saw. The saw is kind of a, an odd uh, representation here, but no matter. It all feels really good, and I always love seeing more Swiss Army knife alternatives. Uh, even though I love Swiss Army knives, I'm carrying a Victorinox product in my pocket right now. Uh, next up, we have from Prometheus Design Works, we have this. This is the Danger Ranger Bear Scout knife, reloaded. Bit of a mouthful. 
This is also made in Italy, like the Fox. It is actually made by Mercury, which is the same company uh, that's part of the MKM uh, partnership, and they do their Malga and Campo uh, multi-tool knives as well with M390 steel. This, however, uses RWL34 steel. So that's basically CPM154. You can think of it as an analog to that. Really cool spear, you know, not quite a spear point. The tip is below the center line. Drop point profile with a full flat grind. The other thing I like is they didn't go too thick on the blade. They maintained the nice thin quality, thin slicey quality that uh, you know, we all know and love from a Swiss Army knife. They didn't go too thick, which is nice. On top of that, I didn't even talk about the scales yet. Actual stag covers. So each one is one of a kind. They're gonna look a little bit different. They're gonna feel a little bit different, but you get a little bit of natural texture there to uh, keep it from being slippery and a nice, more organic feel in the hand than plastic or metal for sure. As for the other implements, we have the fork. Anyone familiar with the Malga 6 will, uh, will know what's going on there. We have a pair of scissors with a nice cutout there for pulling them open. We have a wood saw. These work pretty well and feels more appropriate on this one than the, uh, the fox we just looked at. And we have a can opener and cap lifter with a flathead on the front. And on the back, we have an awl and a flathead screwdriver. All in all, a really cool package. Um, I'm actually missing the price here on my screen in front of me. So through the magic of television or editing in that any case, this is how much it is right now. Price is subject to change with time. There we go. Now that that's taken care of, we can look at some fixed blades. Makes me very happy. Here's where all the time we saved goes down the drain. It's gone. <laughs> Cold Steel. This is the Republic Field Survival Knife, and it is made by one of my most favorite underrated American knife manufacturers, that being White River Knife and Tool. The result of this collaboration is this very cool knife right here. Uh, drop point shape, saber height flat grind for durability as opposed to more sliceability uh, because the thickness is not too, too thick. It's about an eighth of an inch thick there. By keeping the, uh, the grind a little bit lower, this can kind of punch a little harder, so to speak. Uh, but it's not gonna be too wedge-like that you're not gonna be able to still slice with it, I would say. The five inches gives you enough length for some bigger quote unquote survival tasks uh, in, you know, short of chopping, of course, this is not gonna be a choppy thing, but it's short enough, you can still control it pretty well. Uh, this is gonna be a larger hunter, but you could hunt with it. You could choke up on the, in the finger trail here, but just watch the uh, sharpened edge there at the back if you do, but you can do that for some finer work. The handles are very comfortable, natural canvas micarta. Bit of a uh, kind of texturing thing going on here or uh, extra little detailing, but they don't raise hot spots or at least they don't feel like they would here, you know, sitting behind a table, obviously not in the woods, uh, actually putting it to use, but it feels pretty good. I like the finger guard for protection right there. Always important in my mind, especially for a survival knife. On the back end, this is a full tang design and we do have a protruding tang there at the back. Some jimping on the, what do you want to call those? The quarter sections, but a pure flat section here at the back. So if you needed to kind of pound on some stuff with it, the jimping wouldn't necessarily tear those things up, but you get the advantage of that jimping in some reverse grips if you need it, or even some chest lever grips or alternate grips as well. The sheath, quick, everybody place your bets. Say Kydex or leather. We all decided, we'll see what it is. It is leather. I could honestly have seen them going either way uh, in this case, but they have provided us with a nice leather sheath. You can see it has a nice click in it. It's not wet formed, but it is slightly formed already. As you can see, therefore, you get some good, good feeling retention and a nice positive click almost from it. The belt loop on the back is a simple pass through. It does have two slots uh, cut through it. Probably a little unnecessary given you could just go through the middle, but maybe there's uh, some techniques or you know, things that uh, I'm not thinking of or I'm, I'm unaware of. If so, comment section, please enlighten me. Next up, back to Boker, we have the Mikri, which I think stands for Mini Kukri. Uh, this is uh, a 3.11 inch D2 blade uh, coming in at about $89. Uh, we've also got the Macri, which is 
actually a shorter blade. That one's 2.8 inches, but it's got even more of a Kukri style drop to it. Uh, I think this one might be a little more useful day to day, which is why I picked out this one to show you. Uh, about 89 bucks for this, like I mentioned, 83 and some change for the Macri. Stone wash finish, quite nice. We have the tip actually, it's, it's way below the center line, but with the way your hand actually grips this, this, drilling with this would not be out of the question. That would actually work fairly decently. It's not so far down that you're, you know, like swinging it around to do that. It is a pretty neutral feeling twist, actually. You draw a line from there to the tip. Yeah, that works. Uh, you've got enough recurve here to increase your pull cutting strength or your pull cutting power. Uh, more edge is going to engage with the material you're cutting when cut thusly, but it's not so aggressive that you can't get in and do like little bushcrafty, you know, wood carving, whittling tasks, that sort of thing, which when I'm looking at fixed blades, it's usually one of the first things I'm looking at anyway. G10 handles, a lot of sculpting going on for extra grip, red liners for a pop of color. Doesn't feel too sharp, all these, uh, these ridges, you could probably get away with not wearing gloves if you didn't have them. I might choose to wear gloves anyway, but that's gonna work quite nicely. It's just a really cool little utility blade, little sidearm, little uh, backup to a larger fixed blade, or even an everyday carry fixed blade when you're not you know, out in the field, so to speak. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, Kydex sheath with a uh, belt attachment is provided. Next up, we have a new work tough that is just dropped today. It is the Grizzly from Aurora Borealis Knives as the designer, uh, to about 259, 260 for this knife right here. It is a blade of just about 10 inches. It is nice and thick, quarter inch or so right there. Dropped clip point. There's like a drop to the spine before it clips there right at the end. Very broad, very powerful feeling. And with a nice sculpted handle that allows you to feel like you have a lot of control over that big choppy blade. Very, very cool. I love the high flat grind on it. I love the precision that Work Tough imbues all of their products with. I love how sharp and how refined they go on their edges too. I mean, it's convex. We'll get a close up of that. There's some real, uh, like a real high degree of reflectivity there. Very, very nice, especially on chopping, which is in reality, if you're chopping hard wood, it's a big, hard, fast push cut. That's the sound it makes, didn't you know? Not it. <laughs> well, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> uh, speaking back to the uh, the broadness of the blade, they do give you a finger choil here. So if you wanted to choke up to balance things out a little bit and use it for smaller tasks, you could. And because of that height to the blade, your finger is quite well below the actual end of the sharpened edge. That is, this is always kind of a uh, something to be aware of when you're dealing with finger choils with the, gr the sharpened edge ground through it. This you know, provides you a little bit of an extra degree of uh, peace of mind when you're doing that sort of thing. And then when you're ready to chop, swing back behind the nice aggressive finger guard and chop away. Handles, again, they feel nice and comfortable. The sculpting on them is quite nice. They give you some pinch grips there. So if you are kind of pushing this through, you, I guess you could do some kind of you know cutting board rock choppy stuff with this if you wanted to. I mean, it's gonna have, yeah, you're, you're gonna wanna hang the, uh, the edge of the knife or the handle off the you know, end of the table or cutting board that you're working on, but you could do it. And because of those pinch uh, or finger scallops there, it makes it a little bit easier to do. That's pretty cool. It comes with a lot of goodies in the box. It comes with a Kydex sheath. It comes with a, uh, a tech lock style. I think it's a dots uh, belt attachment. It also comes with a shoulder sling and some extra little goodies as well. All of it is top notch. Uh, I didn't show it here uh, last week or this, but we've also got some Puzan Wilderness buoys still in stock. Uh, make sure to check out the link in the description for those as well. Next up, considerably smaller, but still something with kind of toughness in its consideration. Benchmade this week has dropped the Mini Super Freak. Just the Mini Freak on the website. We don't actually list Super Freak on it, but uh, they previously had the full size Freak in this configuration and it was so popular they thought, why don't we just do the, uh, the Mini after all. Three inch blade, M4 blade steel, very, very cool stuff. Nice and tough, high flat grind, 
versatile drop point shape, not too thick, so it still slices well, but that steel, as mentioned, is going to be quite tough. So the edge should be very hardy, should be very resistant to chipping out on you when engaged in some really aggressive and twisting cutting, perhaps. The handles feel good as well. They are G10, gray and black with a cool milling pattern. Red with it for a pop of color, kind of like the, uh, the Mikri we looked at there earlier, uh, both on the uh, liner and on the barrel spacers right there. This is a fully ambidextrous design. I always appreciate, with very few exceptions, all of Benchmade's uh, access lock knives typically have reversible clips. That is the case right here as well. We've got dual thumb studs also for the lefties or the righties. But as CRKT knows, because they just saw fit not to even include a thumb, set of thumb studs here, most people with a crossbar lock are just doing this anyway. And it works. Right out of the box, that action is absolutely fantastic. Price on these right now, about $243. So it's not significantly cheaper uh, than the full-sized version, uh, which runs about $252 these days. Next up, we have the Flytanium Arcade. Like a crossbar lock, this is using a finger safe lock, but it is using the Demco Shark Lock, an actual Demco Shark Lock, not just something similar to it, making this only the second production knife design to be released with that lock, apart from the, uh, the AD20 and 20.5 series that is uh, existing right now. With this, we're, you're gonna be paying about 209 bucks for it, uh, but you are buying not just the knife, you are buying essentially a platform that you can mess around with. We've got a couple configurations right out of the box uh, in terms of uh, actual materials, but you're gonna be able to buy inlays, you're gonna be able to buy backspacers, you're gonna be able to buy screw sets, uh, all in different colors and different materials to mix things up as you go along. So make sure to check out the link in the description. Uh, we have some of those accessories have hit the site already and you can see the other uh, stock configurations this knife is available into. This one, green aluminum with yellow G10. Uh, what's the color they're calling it? Cause it's kind of a, it's like a highlighter yellow just about. Ah, they don't have a special name for it. It's yellow G10. There you go. Yellow and green, always a good looking combo. We've got blackened hardware for the crossbar lock sorry, for the shark lock right there, as well as the pivot hardware, deep carry pocket clip, uh, non-reversible, unfortunately, uh, which is kind of a shame because the lock and of course the thumb studs make this otherwise ambidextrous if it weren't for that. Uh, 3.2 inch blade, S35VN steel with the drop point, high flat grind, bit of a swedge there, not too thick, not too thin. It's just a general good compromise for a decently tough and very versatile drop point blade. The action, if you've ever experienced a shark lock before, it's exactly the same. It's exactly what you would expect. In fact, I believe, actually I don't know where these are being made. Um, I think they're being made in Taiwan in the same place that the, uh, the 20.5s are being made. I don't know that for sure, so don't quote me on it. But it certainly feels exactly like you would expect. Plenty of length there on the handle for slightly larger or larger hands. Uh, smaller hands than mine, of course, are gonna have no problem with that either. Very cool concept, very cool that they're launching, you know, all the parts essentially at the same time as the knives as well. So if you don't quite like uh, the, the configurations that exist, but you do like the knife, there's options, so check them out. All right, I know there haven't been a lot of, you know, super affordable options on the table today. That's just luck of the draw uh, with the new stuff that comes in each week. But we're gonna end things with some expensive things. <laughs> We got a lot of new ADV in recently, and this is a knife that uh, I haven't handled in this type of setup before. This is the Trail Boss, a four inch S35 VN flipper. Several, you know, different versions, some fancier, more blinged out than the others. This one right here in a slightly more pulled back aesthetic comes in at about $460. That's pulled back. Well, in terms of its aesthetics, anyway. That is ADV. The, other, the others are, are more expensive and more you know, over the top in, in his kind of signature style, which I'm not saying over the top in a bad way, it's just over the top in a good way. It's a very cool blade. You've got, like I said, four inches, fairly thick. It looks about you know, 3 16 of an inch thick there, full flat grind. So this is not quite about slicing efficiency, even though you've got enough of it 
when you put the uh, the full flat grind on such a wide blade. Uh, but for everyday, you know, efficient slicing, I might look elsewhere. Maybe I even wouldn't. I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of prevaricating here a little bit, and I, I'm sorry for that. But it's I haven't actually put it to use in person. But it might be a little wedgy through cardboard. But it's forget about it. It's cool. I like it. The finish is pretty cool too. It's kind of grayed out and then tumbled. And then the section right near the edge itself is uh, given a satin treatment. Almost gives it the uh, look of a Scandi grind, even though it is not. Is that we do have a you know standard secondary bevel here right at the edge, but it's got that kind of look to it, that kind of vibe, which is interesting. The handles are titanium. We've got milled pocket clip with two screws that is reversible. You can do that on either side wheel there at the pinch point, which is always fun. We've got a frame lock with ball bearings. We've got several ways to open this knife. You've got the flipper tab, which flippers quite nicely. You've got, sorry. Yeah, the uh, my thumb's kind of getting in the way of the closing there just a little bit. You've got a thumb or blade cutout, and you've got that pocket deploy right there, kind of bolted on to it. But because of that, if you so choose when you draw the knife, you can angle it so that that catches the hem of your pocket. So as you pull it, the blade is already deployed and ready to go. Very, very cool. Check this out. Check out uh, the rest of the Trail Boss selection that we've got in stock right now as well. Uh, next up from Custom Knife Factory, coming in at about 580 bucks, we've got the Sukhoi 4 Frame Lock. This is a bit of a monster in a, in a good way. All these things are in good ways. A four inch M398 blade. It has eight more M's, don't you know, than your M390. Very finely, finely finished blade. It looks, it's either a really super fine blasting medium or it's got this kind of hand rubbed something or other. It's just really, really nicely done. Full flat grind with a swedge on that blade. It gets very acute, very narrow out there near the tip, both in the side profile and the spine profile. So you'll have a great deal of uh, precision, not going to plow through what you're cutting with that tip. You can be very careful with it. And then if you need to plow through it, just move back on the blade. You can push really nicely. The handles are titanium. We've got marbled carbon fiber inlays, two on the front, two on the back. Other embellishments here, we've got a Zircutai pocket clip as well as Zircutai pivot collars, and we have a zirconium backspacer. Almost gives it the look of an integral, the way it's kind of wedged uh, and fitted in there so precisely, which is just very, very cool indeed. High degree of precision in the build of this knife for sure. It is a frame lock. As you can see, it nestles closed quite nicely. As for opening action, you got the flipper, with the ball bearings and the uh, highly tuned detent, it flips quite well. You can also reverse flick it with the blade cut out. And of course, you could thumb cut out. But actually, the reverse flick's a little easier because you kind of keep your uh, finger off the lock bar when you're doing that, which is very cool. Yeah, very, very cool indeed. All right, folks, that's all we've got time to show today. Make sure to let me know what you thought in the comment section below and to get your hands on any of these, uh, these nice, nice knives take a look at the links in the description. That'll take you to knifecenter.com, where of course we've got our long running knife rewards program, where you can earn money back towards a future knife when you buy one of these knives today, sometimes up to 5%. If you buy double points items all the time, it could be even more. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time. There's no time for our regular outro. Let's go.